Hello world, this is Dr. Dave Maslach talking to you about reciprocity.com. The E is written with a three. And in this particular video, I wanna to talk to you about advice and tips for associate and full professor. So if you don't know me, I'm an associate professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship, and I created this whole reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. There were so many people that helped me out that I wanna pay the favor for it and help you out. Um, all right, so since I got tenure, and I'm really privileged to get tenure and promotion at my institution this year, it's a wonderful institution. The colleagues are just um, at, they're, they're top notch. You can't get better to colleagues. But you'll notice that um, if you've been watching these videos is I've been really struggling with a sense of self and purpose. Um, you know, part of the reason is because I'm doing these YouTube channel or doing this YouTube channel. And it's a really oddball activity in academia. And doing anything like this is, is really strange um, in a lot of different ways. But, you know, it is an oddball activity. And, um, you know, I've been struggling with that. And that's part, part of my struggles. But I think um, having these struggles that I have been going through as an associate professor and sort of thinking about my sense of self and what I'm actually all about um, is really, really common in academia. And I'm not the only one. And I think, um, you know, a lot of associate professors that are out there and a lot of full professors even are out there thinking about what, a, what am I actually supposed to do with what I'm doing? Um, and, you know, I do meet with people and they all struggle. Most professors actually struggle with these kind of things. And they do from time to time have a lot of emotions. Um, once, particularly once you become an associate professor and once you become a full professor um, at these stages in life, because it gives you time to reflect on what you are actually doing and what you've done with your life, right? So a lot of us, um, you know, when, uh, it really, it's somebody that I care about a lot, um, told me that it's like when you go up for tenure, it's like all of the activities that you have done all of a sudden comes and hits you in the face. Um, and that's really what's happening to me is that all of these things I have done and I've thought about, it really comes back and just kind of hits you in the face. And you're thinking about, you know, is this the right thing for me? Is this what I'm actually supposed to be doing? Um, you know, many of you are probably worrying about whether you're going to get to die um, to become full professor or get this sort of eminent scholar someplace and do that kind of stuff or getting stuck as, a, as an associate professor. But for me, that's not really what I'm worried about, um, you know, because I, I, I know that if I get to, uh, denied, you know, promotion uh, to full professor at my institution, I could probably go someplace else. I'm pretty sure that I can go someplace else and, and continue on with this career. The other thing to know is that, you know, if, you, if you're tenured, um, there's not much that they can do, and, and barring that you do something really goofy. Um, there's not much that they can do. It is a job that you are continued to have at the institution, right? And so they'll make ways to um, allow you to become a professor in different ways. So that's not really what I'm struggling with at all, but it's more of this struggle of, um, you know, thinking about what am I doing? And, and it's the thing that I'm actually doing, the stuff that I'm actually doing, is it important? Um, you know, all of these kind of questions like this. And then the, the thing that I really struggle with, and it really does, you know, I've been really dealing with this, is are other people actually accepting of my choices and what I'm about? And it's not just students, right? So a lot of students might sort of think, you know, um, undergraduate students and things like that is, you know, that they, they I'm not trying to be friends with them. You know, I, at one point, I probably would have liked to have been friends with them, but, you know, I've kind of outgrown that. But it's thinking about larger, the larger academia as a whole and thinking about, you know, is there other people that are, are recognizing what I'm doing as, as important? Um, and for me, the struggle is really defining and thinking about, for me, uh, you know, am I actually an important individual in, in this world, right? And I think that is the real critical um, thing that we all struggle with. And at these moments where you've looked back and you think about, well, geez, Louise, you know, I did all this work. Was it really worth all that time and effort to do that kind of stuff? Um, and some of us will kind of lose the path that we're doing, right? And, and go and to go do something else. And, and that's okay. That, that is totally your choice. Um, you know, what I've come to realize, though, is that I'm not necessarily, I might not be the best person in terms of the publishing game, right? So there's, there's, I am not the, the most prolific person that I know. 
um, compared to many different people that I and that that I interact with. Right? There's many other people that have written many, many more articles, um, many more articles. Um, they they've written books. Uh, they they attend conferences on a regular basis. They do all these scholarly things that we're supposed to do that are far better and they're all far better than I am as an individual in terms of the scholarly um, output. And that's the way I feel, right? I, um, and I am trying to struggle with this and think about, um, you know, is how do I actually fit with all these people that are really impressive? So for me, I am that boy that is 10 years old that grew up four hours from any nearest university in the middle of nowhere in a town that had only 6,000 people um, that I had parents that didn't go to university. I didn't have, I didn't know any family member that ever went to university. Um, I, I believe so. I don't, I, I might be uh, mistaken on that, but I don't remember any family member that ever went to university and did all this kind of stuff. So it's a really strange feeling for me, um, where I'm reflecting upon, am I actually important as the stuff that I'm actually doing? Is this stuff actually it matter? Does it actually matter in the world? Um, compared to what other people are doing. And, and I'm, it might be just me. It might be, you know, I'm just this, this kind of weird individual that really worries about what other people are thinking. Um, but I do truly struggle with that in terms of where I actually fit with the world because I don't view myself. And, you know, I, in some ways, I don't think I'm extraordinary. Um, I, I'm extraordinarily average with this in terms of, you know, I'm I'm not good in terms of, you know, I'm not the, the most prolific person in terms of scholarly output, but at the same time, I know I'm pretty average with what I'm actually doing. And that's the thing I'm struggling with is thinking about, you know, is the stuff that I'm doing, is it important? Does it actually matter? Um, and the advice that I can actually give to you, and, and I've been really thinking about this a lot um, over the course of the last year, maybe even a little longer, because it's really, you know, forced me to think about these kind of things. Um, in the advice that I have been slowly moving towards and thinking towards for myself, and hopefully it's going to help you out as you go through the associate professor stage and the full professor stage in academia, um, is just to keep doing what you are doing. And it's really important um, to continue doing those things as you move towards academia. I mean, first of all, the reason why you got tenure and the reason why you became full professor is because you were doing all of those things and people believed that you were doing the right things, right? So that's a hard thing for me to deal with and to think about um, because I'm, I'm not going to ever sort of accept that in terms of, well, I should probably just, you know, look at those accomplishments and, and be proud of those accomplishments. That's not what I'm about. Um, and that's not kind of how I process things. I'm still going to have strong emotions all the time. Um, that I'm not measuring up to other top scholars and that are around the world and top researchers around the world. Um, but I think, and this is where I've been sort of pivoting uh, in, in terms of my thoughts, is the stuff that I'm most proud about um, is the stuff that I struggle with the most. And what makes me not necessarily all that um, unproductive or makes me, it doesn't make me all that productive. Right. So things like I'm really proud that my wife and I have stuck together through all of this and we continue to work on our marriage and strengthen our marriage and our, our family and try to keep us together and, and do things that we should do as as a husband and wife. And that's a really tough thing to do um, in academia. It's a really tough thing to do in the real world, um, whatever that real world looks like. But you know, it's a really tough thing to do in academia where you have all of these different demands and you're getting pulled in, in every different direction. And it's a real struggle. So I, for myself, because I spend time with my wife um, and I, I truly, you know, if you watch this, I truly do love my wife. Um, you know, it's kind of weird to say that on YouTube, but I truly do love, love my wife. I love you, Lindsay. Um, so, you know, I really do love my wife and spending time with her and developing our relationship. That takes away from everything that I do in academia that makes me less prolific as a scholar in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, one way I'd sort of think about this is maybe it is, you know, risk minimization, right? That I can be more of a better scholar if I have, um, you know, family and support and all that kind of around me. But then there's, there's a huge part of me that sort of thinks about you know, if I was alone um, in a cabin and nobody else around and, and sort of people 
um, did everything for me, um, you know, I could be really prolific and I could be a really, um, you know, amazing scholar, right? But that's not who I am as an individual. And for me to keep strengthening my marriage, um, I'm extremely proud about that, that we've been able to, to continue through and, and grow um, together. And, and, and be, you know, more better human beings and to, to love each other more. I know that this is really sort of wishy stuff, willy-nilly stuff, but it is a real struggle for me. And I, and I know that that's, that's thing that is really, really important to me. Um, and I'm really proud about that. Um, the, the other thing that I struggle with um, then it makes me less prolific, prolific as a scholar is I really true care. I, I do care about others. Um, and I think it's so much so that it's a fault and, and I struggle with it. So you could ask, you could ask my wife, um, you know, that, that and I, on a regular basis, I talk about at night in terms of like, you know, what do other people think about me? Um, you know, it, it gives me so much stress and anxiety that I can't necessarily think at night. Um, I don't think that that's necessarily, you know, unusual in any sort of way, because I truly do care about other people so much that I want them to, to really, um, you know, to, 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 to really like me, um, in a lot of different ways. And however that might be, whether as a scholar and say that your ideas are, are wonderful, um, but as well as just being a wonderful colleague. So I really do think about others. Um, I'm very relational with that. And because I'm so relational um, and think, I think about other people so much that, that, that sometimes I, I don't think about sort of being productive, right? So doing YouTube videos like this, and it's an oddball activity. I know that's an, it's, I strongly know that it's an oddball activity and other people around probably think that I'm, I'm crazy. Um, other people think that, 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 you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just really weird um, in, in a lot of different ways. But I know that there's other people that are watching these videos. I know that. I could see that. Um, and whether they, you know, support me um, or give a little comment saying, you know, thank, thank you for that. That's besides the point. I know that other people are watching the full videos and they're getting some, something from this. And whatever that might be. Um, that's important to me. And that comes at a cost of becoming a productive scholar. Um, the other thing is, you know, if I see somebody that has fallen down, um, I'm probably going to be the person that's going to stop and pick that person up. And that's always going to be at the expense of my career. I remember riding my bike in, um, you know, a number of times riding my bike in to work and there was somebody on the street. So I'd, I'd stop. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd call the police and see what was going on. You know, they'd get an ambulance or whatnot. But that comes at a cost of your career. I could have just continued to ride by um, and, and worked an extra hour and probably been a little bit more productive. Uh, but at the same time, I know as, as a human being, as me deep down inside, um, and, and I'm struggling with this right now, right? Like, if this is a real thing for me, that deep down inside it matters to me that I actually care for other people and that the research productivity that I have is not necessarily the most important objective. And I know other people are going to say, you're, that's a load of horse crap. Um, you should always focus on your research productivity. But for me, I need to do these kind of things. I need to, um, build relationships with other people. I need, I need to focus on my family. I, I need that kind of stuff. And those things um, are what really matters to me. And so this is my advice, I think, for associate professors and, and full professors that are going through this, just like me, um, if you are, right, is to stay true to who you are as a person. So you know what you're about and you can be happy with who you are. And the reason why you actually got to the point of where you are right now is because you've done those things that you really care about. And if you stay true to those, those things, um, it is not that these things are, are extraordinary in any sort of way. They're completely ordinary. 
to, because you've done those for the last 20 years of your life, if not longer, you've done that for many years of your life. All of those things are completely ordinary, but those things that you do on a regular basis and you repeatedly do those, they actually turn into extraordinary things. So you should take pride in the fact that you're you and, and really accept who you are as a person. Um, that's all I wanted to say is just really stay true to who you are as a person and continue to do the things that, that make you, you, and that's going to go a long ways. All right. So, um, if you liked this video, give me a thumbs up and, uh, do subscribe to the YouTube channel. I do appreciate it. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye.